Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be yet another in my Figma tutorial series. Today we're taking a look at some more of the tools inside of Figma, some of the quirks and special things about the tools that you might not know. Last time we took a look at the ellipse tool inside of Figma. Uh, today we're gonna be looking at the rectangle tool, the polygon tool, and the star tool. All of those are very similar in how they work and a little bit different from what we found with the ellipse tool. So I'm gonna group all these together today and just show you some of the quirks about them and how to use all three of these tools. Let's get into it. And here we are back again, once inside of Figma, Hello, my old friend. My old today we're taking a look at some more tools inside of this menu. Uh, we're gonna be looking in depth at the rectangle tool, the polygon tool, and the star tool. And again, the idea with these videos is whether you're a brand new designer in the field and maybe you're just brand new to Figma, or you've been doing this for years, there's a lot of small little things with some of these tools like we saw last time with the ellipse tool that you just may not know or you may not have noticed in some of the contextual changing panels inside of Figma. Unfortunately, polygon and star do not have keyboard shortcuts. Big boo on that. A uh, rectangle does have one. You can use R to create a rectangle. So highly recommend for this first one we're gonna look at being rectangle that you use R to create that shape inside of Figma and it's just quicker. So always use your keyboard shortcuts, people. So as we learned last time, if you do not hold any modifier keys, this just drags up and down and you can size this to however you please. This goes for really any type of shape or any type of vector inside of Figma. This even works with photos and things like that. Uh, so we learned last time if you hold shift, it will keep the proportion. So it will only size based off of that proportional size that it was before. So that's nice. Uh, one thing I did not cover last time though, is you can also hold option uh, when you're dragging or sizing something. And what that does is it centers from the, so the center of the object. So normally inside of Figma, if you just drag, it always starts from this uh, zero, zero location, the topmost location, the leftmost location. And that's how it, it goes by sizing things. However, if you want to be able to size it from the center point of your shape, which sometimes you do, you can hold that option key and then it will size from the center, which is nice. And as a added bonus, you can also hold shift. So hold option and shift together. Then you will be proportional and you will also be sizing from the center point. So not specific again to rectangles, stars, or polygons today that we're looking at, but just some pro keyboard tips inside of Figma that you should definitely be using. So the rectangle tool is pretty basic in Figma, hence the reason I grouped this with the star tool and the polygon tool, just because these can all be covered pretty quickly. They're very similar in how they work. With the ellipse tool, we saw that we could create some pretty unique shapes and some pie charts and things like that. But the rectangle tool is pretty basic. You're, you're drawing your squares, you're drawing your long strips like this or your rectangles. And you know, other than the holding shift to size it and holding the option to center from the or two sides from the center. Most of this stuff is all across all the tools, uh, but for the rectangles, the only really special thing you can do here is the border radius. And this is nice though, uh, with other programs like Sketch and Illustrator in years before of my design work, I don't believe it had anything like this. You might've been able to hold down some modifiers, but this is just so much easier. It's right here, it's a nice big grabber that will allow you to size the radius. And then up here in the upper right panel, we have access to all the things that we do with all of our shapes. So we're able to change the size up here. We're able to change the width and the height independently. Of course, if you want to lock that, you can apply this constrained proportions. And then if I change this to a 500, it will keep those proportions similar to if we're holding shift and we'll size this up and down for us. Now we have this gigantic candy bar shape. Other than that, you also have control of the border radius up here as well, in case you're not using the grabbers right here, and then you can rotate your shape as well. So that's the main pieces up here. Now, one little small thing here that I've never really noticed before, I just didn't click on it to see what it was, was independent corners. <clears throat> this is another nice feature of Figma that allows you to size each corner separately of, of the radius. So if I want a sharp corner down here to make kind of an interesting little speech bubble or something, I can do that with the pretty basic settings right here inside of Figma. And this in, in Illustrator, one of the other design programs, you would have to cut it, rejoin the lines. Uh, there's probably been things added. I don't use Illustrator as much anymore. That would make this process quicker, but it's just pretty cool that it gives you individual access to the corner radius of each side. So you can really do some unique shapes inside of here. And then last little piece here is it gives access to corner smoothing. Uh, this really kind of applies to iOS and how it handles the corner uh, smoothing on different devices. I'll probably be doing an individual uh, video on this to cover the details of corner smoothing because it applies to most of the shapes. So that is the rectangle. Now, if we come back up here, 
and we have our star tool, can draw our star onto the stage. And then similar with how the, uh, the ellipse tool works, you can size the corners here for the radius. So you can create some more organic shapes like this, or maybe just a star with rounded edges so it's not pointy. Again, you can modify all this up in the contextual panel as well, but it's just nice here as you're using the tool, you can modify it. And then this little guy is similar to the ellipse tool as well with the, the ratio, you're able to also create like some different polygons or some thinner stars or get down into some like starburst shapes, things like that by dragging the ratio. So pretty nice, just allows you to modify this on the fly without using the panel. And then lastly here with stars, you can grip onto one of the points and then change the amount of points that there are. So again, pretty nice if you're creating a little uh, CTA thing with like a price on it or something or like new low price, uh, you could have something like this. So you can create shapes by just dragging this. Uh, if you didn't know, you can go all the way up to 60. And at that point, you start creating this cog shape and it almost gets uh, too out of control. So I think they just limit at 60. And there's not much else here as far as any additional settings or cool configs for, for the star. Uh, you've got you know access to the corner smoothing here, as well as all the settings that we already looked at with the count and things that you can just do by dragging these little grabbers right here. So nothing too special up in the panel to do with stars. Now, if we go over here to our last shape that we're gonna look at today, which is polygons. Again, no keyboard shortcut, which is kind of a bummer. We'll delete our weird gear shaped star. And now with polygons, very similar. You have a, a grabber here for count. So it's nice that this is consistent across all the shapes and you can create different sides on your polygon. And again, count up to 60. At that point, you've basically got a circle. So they just cut it off at 60, but you can create uh, some pretty interesting shapes just by dragging the corner. And then of course you have your radius here as well. So you're able to round these out and again, create some pretty interesting, more organic shapes. So that's that's basics of, of polygon stars and rectangles. I don't believe that this one has any additional settings either. It's just got corner smoothing. And then of course you can adjust everything we already looked at as far as the count and all that over here. And in case you didn't notice, uh, if you do hover over these long enough, it will tell you what that individual adjustment is. So kind of nice just to know what the name of this is. So you can refer to it to other designers and just learn it yourself um, so that you're able to speak the lingo. And that's basically it for shapes. Uh, we're gonna cover a couple more of the pen tools and things like that in future videos, uh, but that's the basics of the main shapes you're gonna be using is rectangles, ellipse, and polygons, as well as some stars for your designs. And make sure you learn these keyboard shortcuts. And we're gonna be covering this on some other future videos, but the real power here comes when you start combining some of these things. So uh, this is not specific to anything we looked at today, but we can start creating some interesting shapes using things like the Pathfinder tool. So if we come up here, uh, this is very similar to how it works in Illustrator. They may have a different name for it here inside of Figma, but you're able to cut different shapes out. So we can use this to create some unique types of shapes. And this obviously is not an interesting shape. Maybe it is, I don't know. I'm not even sure what it looks like in Asteroid, but this just shows the power of how you can combine some of these tools after you create these individual shapes, layer them up here, exclude, cut, intersect, just really make these shapes unique. And then you can use this for logos or icons or really anything else inside of your designs that you need to use inside of Figma. That's all she wrote, quick one today. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about polygon tools, star tools, and the rectangle tool inside of Figma. Uh, most of this you may have already known, some of it you may not have noticed before. So just exposing this uh, gets it in your mind and hopefully you use some of these keyboard shortcuts or little individual kind of quick action grabbers inside of Figma on your next project. If you did get value, do me a favor, hit the like button. It lets me know that you enjoy the content I create here on the channel. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell if you wanna be notified of of more videos just like this one on the channel, as well as everything else that I put out for content on the channel. Thanks for joining me again today. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you on the next video.